Even my relatives ever become household names. But Glenn James was the exception to the rule. Ten long years of abuse from on and off the field never dampened his enthusiasm for the game. Ray Huppets came up to me and it was about halfway through the last quarter and um, Barry Coble and those blokes were playing, you know, Rod Ashman was playing, Bazasto, and um, he came along and said, uh, he picked up this chicken bone and he said to me, uh, hey, uh, James, he said, you're going like a dog, he said, you might as well have this. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Ray, because he started to walk away I was, and I just went, come back here. I just went like that and he came back and he thought I was going to report him. And I said, listen, mate, I said, you've given that to the wrong bloke, you know. And he said, why? I said, because if you keep hanging around here, mate, I said, I'm going to point this at you. <laughs> <laughs> and what did he and say? he took off. He took said to off. me, he said, you're mad, you bastard. <laughs> One of James's fondest memories was the 1982 grand final. A game remembered not only for Carlton's great win, but the unexpected appearance of this young lass. I looked around and here's this girl. She's jumping around. I thought there were three footies on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at mine and looked at two others and thought, no, I'm going to this one. <laughs> so anyway, I looked around and um, she's got a, a scarf wrapped around Bruce Dool's head. It wasn't anyone getting knocked out. she was out. completely nude. She was completely naked. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, you can imagine Bruce Dool. I mean, he hardly says a word. I think the yeah. most he said to me in my 10 years of umpire in league footy was occasionally he would say when I played a free kick against him, he'd look at you with his hands in the air and he'd shake his head and he'd say, that was a bloody strange one. Yeah. That's the most he ever said. Anyway, this day he was really going off because she had the scarf wrapped around his neck and she's dancing around and Bruce Dool's going, <laughs> 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 That was him going and right was, She was a blonde. Was she a natural blonde? Um, well, no, she wasn't. She did, was, you did you notice that? Well, yeah, I can attest to that, yeah. <laughs> James was never shy when it came to pulling his report book out. In fact, I used to refer to him as the quickest drawer in the land. Nor did he mind putting his own welfare at risk. Why else would he pay a free kick against Collingwood in front of the Victoria Park Social Club? It was 30 odd minutes into the last quarter and uh, Fitzroy were three points in front. Collingwood, um, Ricky Barham was just about to kick the ball and uh, Mickey Connor was put his hand out and was just about to grab him and Tony Shaw was going whack, he hit him in the face. And I blew the whistle. In the meantime, the ball got kicked down into the goal square. It was marked by uh, Craig Davis, and he's belted it out onto the railway line, and all the Collingwood supporters thought, yeah, they've, they've, won, they've it. won it. So when they looked around and realised what I'd done, this happened about 10 metres inside the boundary in front of the social club, and you know yeah. how silly a thing that is to do. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, over the fence came the apples and oranges and cans and stubbies, yeah. and everything come flying over. So I said to Ronnie Alexander, I said, Ronnie, would you mind standing there? He said, Glenn, he said, I'll stand in front of a bulldozer for you. He said, because you just won the game for us. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, they won. And we needed 14, me and Robinson and I needed 14 police and two police horses to get off the ground. So I thought that discretion was a better part of it. I thought I'd go home after the game, but it's pretty difficult for me to slip out of the crowd and yeah. slip out in the crowd and get home. And a couple of old biddies were sitting in front of me, like walking in front of me, and they said... Um, you know, one of them said, you know, that bloody James, he murdered us today, didn't he? And the other one said, yeah, you know, they shouldn't let bastards like him into this country, should they? <laughs> <laughs> then, of course, there was Crackers, Crackers Keenan, the most appropriate nickname of all nicknames ever given to a footballer. It looks Crackers, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it was a pretty big game out at BFL Park, and uh, Crackers... Um, I was about to bounce the ball, but actually ready to start the game. I got the approval from the captains and I looked around and I'm about to bounce it. And Cracker said, uh, James, he said, don't you bounce that ball, don't you bounce it. And I said, uh, why? He said, hang on, hang on. He said, I'm not ready. And he yelled out to the trainer, he said, get over here. He said to the trainer, the trainer came running over and he said, uh, he said, listen, he said, this is my account number. And he rattled off four numbers and he said, and that's my code. And he gave him four other things. He said, he said, it's race six, number four. He said, uh, Go and put 50 bucks each way on it for me. And Jimmy Buckley heard him and he, Jimmy yelled out, I'll have 20 of that. And uh, Cracker looked and he said, well, make it 70 and 50. And I said, no, I'll have 20 of that too, Crackers. So he's, he's summed up all the bets and off he's gone. He's totaled them up and away. He's gone and put them on. And halfway through the third quarter, the ball was down in the forward line under the big scoreboard. And I called for a ball up and uh, Jimmy Buckley came running in after the ball up and he jumped on Cracker's back. 
And I said, Jimmy, what'd you do that for? I said, I said, you're just giving away a free kick. I said, that was silly. He said, I've just come down to tell you too. He said, we've got the bickies. He said, look at the scoreboard. He said, we're one to race, mate. <laughs> And apparently Cracker Set was a beauty. Paid good good odds, didn't it? Yeah, it paid six dollars forty. It was called Century Vane. Yeah, I can still remember that horse's name. Yeah. Sam, you were recruited from where to go to Geelong? Well, I was recruited from Geelong Grammar Lou. And what's the old saying about Geelong Grammar? Well, I don't know. It'll be old though. Go on. No, oh, well, it's not.